All right, everybody, welcome to your daily dose of awesome, your life 15 minutes of daily motivation, inspiration, and education so you can get your day started right. Today's topic is something that, again, I'm delivering from uh, the Keith, Cunning, uh, Keith Cunningham Chairman's Council uh, board meeting that, that I had uh, last week. I had the privilege of be, being surrounded by some of the world's most elite entrepreneurs and have them uh, provide feedback to our business and, and uh, what we're doing here at Elite Marketing Pro and our vision, uh, including uh, Rich Dad himself, Keith Cunningham. If you don't know who Keith Cunningham is, he's uh, uh, Robert Kiyosaki's original mentor uh, and the source of a lot of the teachings within Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and Cashflow Quadrant and some of uh, Robert Kiyosaki's best work. And so, uh, obviously, Keith has a wealth of experience having mentored uh, people like Robert and many other uh, entrepreneurs, in fact, thousands of entrepreneurs, uh, and, and so one of the things that he taught us uh, there uh, in terms of, um, you know, being powerful in your business is how to deal with conflict and resolving conflict and issues with people in your business. And I saw a lot of application to this as it relates to, you know, conflict we may experience, you know, upline, downline, uh, crossline from friends, from family. And so uh, that's what I'm going to share with you today on how to deal with conflict in the context of business. But I believe also this is going to help you in your personal life as well because, uh, I mean, you know, truth is truth. You know, what works in one aspect of our lives very likely works in another aspect of our lives. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk, talk to you about some of the philosophies that, that Keith taught us. And then also I'm going to share with you uh, just some thoughts and, and, and build upon uh, those lessons from Keith if that's okay. So, all right. So now before I get started, if you don't know who I am, my name is Freddy Ceballos. I'm a lead generation online marketing expert specializing in helping home business owners as network marketers, affiliate marketers, direct sellers, multiply their incomes using the internet. Uh, in my personal business, uh, I, I was able to build a six-figure network marketing business within a couple of years of discovering the information we teach here at Elite Marketing Pro. And over the past 10 years, I've been responsible for over $12 million, uh, almost $13 million now in, uh, in income into my home businesses. And I've helped their clients produce hundreds of millions of dollars more uh, and income into their businesses respectively as well. So what we do in Teach Works, it has worked in the network marketing, direct selling, uh, and pretty much any digital marketing or online entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurship uh, venture. Uh, what we teach here at EMP has worked and the principles up are universal and apply to any business, offline, online. And so I'm, I'm very proud of what we do here at, at EMP. Now, if you're new to our broadcast, I highly recommend you subscribe to these daily lives. You may have, uh, if you're brand new, you may have seen an opportunity to subscribe in the comments section right below this video. Uh, or you can just click on the video while we're live and uh, a little ellipsis symbol will show up like dot, dot, dot. That'll open up a menu and you'll be able to like, uh, f follow us on, on Facebook and also turn on live notifications. Every time we go live, you get a little reminder on your phone that whenever we go live and you can use, you can click on that if you want to join us during the recording or uh, or watch us live and interact. I want to have some interactions with you guys. I want to actually hear uh, some of your stories as it relates to conflict, you know, things that you've dealt with recently as it relates to conflict. And um, and hopefully I can give you guys some examples uh, that that can really help you and provide context to you know particular situations. So with that said, let me see if we are live here. Uh, so also if you're on desktop, you can simply click on our logo uh, right above this video, and that'll take you to our fan page where you can uh, like our fan page, but also turn on notifications whenever we go live. So what's up, everybody? All right. Oh, there you go. So you heard my voice there. So what's up, Sally? Oh, awesome. I'm glad this is timely. So Sally, I mean, we deal with conflict all the time. So it's going to, I think it's going to be timely for a lot of people. What's up, Scott? Hey, Melinda. Hey, Heather Fusano. Um, so if you guys don't mind, I would love it if you guys, I mean, again, I know this can be a sensitive issue. So if you don't want to, that's okay. But I would love it if you were able to share with me uh, on this live right now through the comment section. Uh, times where you've dealt, have you, or recent times, recent things you've you've dealt with, as it relates to conflict, uh, arguments uh, related to your business. Uh, it could be with your upline. Some of you guys are dealing with that right now because you're doing stuff online. It could be with uh, other team members. It could be with friends and family. Or uh, just let me know what type of situations are you dealing with where you're dealing with conflict and negative negative situations. 
Uh, and so when I get the, when I finish my lesson, hopefully I can address some of those issues. Um, so go ahead and do that right now. Share with me what it is your your, your challenges are, are re as relating to conflict. So let's talk about uh, you know Keith Cunningham. So so Keith was uh, we were we were actually during the middle of board of another business. Uh, we were sharing uh, you know what's going on in that business, and and there's a conflict. It's a family owned business, and and uh, the you know the brothers that own the business you know don't see eye to eye on on certain things and when it comes to discussing those things they they clash and so uh you know keith very frankly said you know if if you're uh if you're if you're having conflict around a certain uh problem it's because the problem is too small so as long as the problem stays small there's no opportunity to work together so that's very interesting so keith again said when you're having conflict with somebody, you're you're having a tactical conversation as to what tactic is right, what tactic is wrong, and and the problem is too small. If you elevate the conversation to what you're actually trying to accomplish, what's the bigger thing at hand uh, that we're we're trying to achieve? Uh, then there's room for alignment, and when you are aligned, then it makes it a lot easier to to discuss things uh, because you both have an alignment on the bigger vision of where you're going and now you're keeping that in mind in terms of where you're going as opposed to just focusing on the the the, the rightfulness or wrongfulness of that tactic that you're discussing uh and and that and and so if you think bigger that tactical conversation now has context and there's the opportunity to work together so uh, so as long as you you keep it at that small level uh, it's pretty much going to be a pissing contest. You know, it's going to be a logical conversation back and forth. And so you want to elevate. So elevate from tactics to an alignment on a vision. So that's the, the general con you know, idea. Uh, tactical conversations will always lead to conflict because we all, when, when I mean by tactical is when you, when you say, for, you know, what's the right way to generate, you know, produce leads? Is it talking to friends and family? Uh, is it going on Facebook and prospecting your friends on Facebook? Is it doing posts on Facebook that are passive? Is it running ads that attract people to you? We can have arguments as to what's the best way uh, to generate leads all day long, and we teach a lot of those th things at, at, here at Elite Marketing Pro. But the point is, it, it's like, okay, so you're having an argument about the tactical, but what are you trying to achieve ultimately? Uh, our, you know, the achieve the big achieve the big goal is to create financial freedom and, and impact as many lives as possible. So is you know so when you say impact as many lives as possible, so my choice to run a Facebook ad versus doing using the cold market. Well, so if if my goal is to impact as many people as possible, uh, what's happening is is that this Facebook ad is allowing me to do that. And so does cold market recruiting. Cold market recruiting allows me to, to reach people and, and impact lives. And so when you put it in that context, it's like, how can you possibly be right or wrong about something? Because clearly, based on the vision, impact as many lives as possible and, and, um, and, and provide them the opportunity, then uh, obviously there's a lot of things that can fall under that category. And it's not a conversation as to this is the best way. As long as I'm accomplishing something that's leading towards my vision, uh, then then you know there's room for for at least dialogue. You may not you know be doing the same things. Your upline or whatever uh, might be using the different strategies. But if ultimately you're bringing people into the business, what you know what what difference does it make? So you want to ask yourself what is the real outcome. So what is the real big outcome that you're trying to uh, move towards? Uh, and, and then so whenever you're in conflict, find that in yourself. And I'm going to elevate this conversation even more. Uh, in, you know, you guys know that I'm, I'm a proponent and, and, uh, and uh, you know, endorse the, the, the technology or, or, or strategies or tools that are uh, taught by the Landmark Forum. And one of those uh, ideas, one of those distinctions that I'd learned at the Landmark Forum, which was really powerful and also has to do exactly with what I'm talking about here, is uh, operating in the realm of right and wrong versus operating in the realm of, of what's, what works. And so r right and wrong versus what works. And most of us hum you know, human beings were conditioned and taught 
to believe certain things and not believe certain things and uh, see certain things as right, see other things as wrong. You know, good and evil. It's like that dichotomy, you know, you know yin yang or um yang. Uh, and so right versus wrong, uh, light versus dark. And so that's how we understand and see, see the world. And, and therefore we have our conversations in that way. And that, but the problem is when you accuse somebody of being wrong and, you're, and you being right, uh, it immediately leads to conflict. There's no way to have a conversation about what's right and wrong, what's true and untrue. Uh, and you direct that at somebody else without making them wrong and making them defensive. And that leads to, conversa to conflict. So you're always going to have, uh, you know, you're, you're always going to create that situation if that's the realm with which you operate. And it's very difficult not to talk in that way because we all have beliefs as to what it is the correct way uh, to believe in terms of, of our faith, what, what's the correct way to build the business, you know, business philosophies, uh, raising children, uh, you know, uh, playing sports. Uh, so we all have an idea of what's right and wrong. But those of you who are sports fanatics know that in basketball and football, you know, every single coach has their, has their styles. And, uh, and, and, and ultimately, when, you, when, you, when uh, analysts elevate the conversation about a particular coach's style and how it's, how, you know, when they look at how it works, not so much is this, you know, is this style, is this formation right and wrong? When they look at overall, does this work? they have to look at it from a different perspective. And so when you're having this type of pissing contest with somebody, uh, you know, having elevating the conversation towards, okay, what are we really trying to do here? What's going to allow us to move towards our big outcome? What essentially what's going to work? So right and wrong versus what works. And so, so when you propose an idea, like I think what might work is if we it might work towards achieving this outcome, this big outcome that we've defined, then uh, I think this is this is the path we need to take uh, in order to achieve this big outcome. It, so now you're no longer making them right or wrong. You're referencing the big vision that you've cast for some, for for both of yourselves, and and now you can have a discussion as to what can get you there. And it's a very di difficult thing to avoid saying somebody no, that's wrong, or no, I don't agree with that. Um, but so when you have a conversation around proposing ideas. And putting and uh, and and having that type of dialogue, what happens is a person's guard comes down. They're no longer in defensive mode, and they become open to your ideas. So it's not that the ideas uh, won't be adopted, or that you're not trying to propose ideas that you think are are correct. What you're doing is changing the conversation so that that person is no longer trying to be right. In other words, their ego is not trying to win that argument. They're actually now you're having a conversation about where you're headed and 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 people become open to ideas and you become open to their ideas as well hopefully that's making sense i know you know we're 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 talking about uh, a few things and it can be a little bit uh you know up in the clouds a, in terms of how this applies to your business but i hope that that makes sense so but the the big takeaway here is avoid the compulsion if you can avoid the compulsion to be right you know, avoid your commitment to be right. Uh, avoid your commitment to win an argument. What you're trying to do is what is the ultimate big outcome that you're trying to achieve? And rather than trying to win an argument and rather than trying to be right in that moment, say, okay, let's take a step back here. What is it we're trying to move towards? And have an alignment around what the big vision, where you're ultimately moving towards. You know, elevate the problem, if you will. That's what Keith Cunningham says. Uh, so Courtney says, my upline saw an, uh, an EMP ad and was very upset with me. So, so very, very upset. And so, uh, this is where, where, you know, you're going to have to, you know, if you, if you want to, you know, salvage that, that, that friendship or that, um, business partnership, uh, yeah, you want to, you want to explain what, what's, what's happening. Now it's up to you what, what post you use of ours. Um, some of our posts, yeah, are designed to elicit, uh, you know, polarization. Like, you know, that's part of marketing. It's like you're in there in this camp or in this camp. You're either frustrated or not frustrated. Uh, and so, so you know, you got to choose what what messaging in your market you're gonna you're gonna put out there. Um, you know, so you know, dividing people, saying you're in this camp and this camp. Uh, that's you know that's part of marketing. I'm trying to do that less and less because I'm sensitive to some of these some of these ideas. 
it doesn't mean I'm, you know, I don't agree with my stance uh, with regards to certain things. I mean, the, the bottom line is at EMP, we are attacked on a constant basis from the traditional uh, side of, of this industry. Uh, we get, you know, all kinds of, of crap from people. And, and the bottom line is what we, we, we don't want, we don't, res, we don't respond in a negative uh, way. Uh, we, you know, there was a time when we did uh, or when I did. And uh, it's just we're, we were committed to helping as many people as possible and we're committed to impacting as many people as possible and helping them uh, discover a new way of building that's going to help elevate their business and elevate their skill set. And so when we, we think about where we're headed, our big vision, it, it serves us not uh, to get in a, a pissing contest with, with anybody unless they truly want to know what we do. And so my, my suggestion there is to, you know, invite or enroll that, that individual to learn what exactly it is we do. And, uh, and I'm, if you have, a, I'll say this right now, if you have an upline, a six-figure mentor or above, uh, and, and you wish to refer them to me and actually have me talk to them uh, and explain what we do, I'm more than happy to do that. I'm more than happy to have conversations with leaders in the industry who ha are open and have a curiosity in, in terms of what we do. And so, uh, so hope, hopefully that, that helps a little bit, you know, no support at home for network marketing, online business training. So that's a great one. So you have no support from home. You, you know, basically maybe your, your spouse is, uh, your spouse is negative or, or not supportive or, uh, or, or whatever one you have to be. So you have to let go of your expectations of their support. So first and foremost, let go of your expectations because you might be disappointed by the fact that that they're not doing certain things that 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 you expect them to do as a supportive spouse or supposedly supportive sister or brother. Um, let go of those expectations, and 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 don't ask for them. You know, don't necessarily try to push them for anything. Don't try to convince them in anything, because when you're trying to convince somebody uh, that something is 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 good over what they believe is not good. What, what are you doing? You're now inviting conflict. And so be secure in what you're doing enough that, that you, you, you're going to stand by it, that you respect their, their position. Now, if they want to learn more about, you know, you invite them to learn more about what you're doing. Um, and again, try to avoid the conversation uh, uh, that, that pins the right and wrong uh, scenario and, and try to see this is what ultimately, what are we trying to move towards? What's our big vision? Is it is it to have a retirement? So is it to have a retirement for the long term? And if so, what are what are some of our ideas for for achieving that long term outcome, um, or or whatever that might be? Hopefully that that helps a little bit. I get objections from family and why I'm wasting my time trying to sell stuff online and trying to get people to join me. So Frida, don't well stop asking people to join you. There's a whole point why we created attraction marketing. So stop asking people around you to join you respect where they are. In fact, don't even uh, talk about your business or address your business at all. Um, because clearly they have, they have, uh, you know, the, a negative reaction to just the business itself. So by you mentioning the business, you're saying you're, what you're doing is you're inviting conflict and, and why, why do it if you know they're not going to be a part of it anyway. And so act normal with your family, act and love them as, as family and, and don't, uh, bring your business into the conversation. This is where you utilize things like attraction marketing, online advertising, online prospecting, social media prospecting. This is where you use these tools to help you grow and achieve your outcome while at the same time not trying to make them wrong for, for not supporting you or or invite them to make you wrong uh, for, for you know, bringing up your business in a conversation because your product is so awesome. You know, your product may be awesome, but they don't give a shit, so why keep bringing it up? So, uh, so hopefully that, that helps. Uh, wish I could click emoticons for this device. Oh, awesome. <laughs> All right. My upline family member went direct to my customer on an issue, then left me out of the loop. I asked not, I asked not to do that. They will not speak to me. Edith things, you know, sometimes unethical things happen in, in the space and you just, you, you have to kind of roll with the punches. It's like, uh, so a family member went direct to, uh, with, to my customer on an issue, then left me out of the loop. I asked not to do that. They will not speak to me. So let me see my upline and a, my upline, a family member went direct to my customer on an issue. Okay. So your upline skipped over you. Okay. Got it. Uh, yeah. I mean, having, so if they won't speak to you, obviously that's, 
that's an issue. But um, very likely, I think what might have happened is you sent an angry message to that upline and and said, hey, how, how can you do this or, or what what's going on? So basically, at some point, you made them wrong for what they did. And of course, when you make somebody wrong, whether they're wrong or right, it doesn't matter. That's not what my point. When you make, when you make somebody wrong, they're going to get defensive and try to cover up their tracks or, or just avoid talking to you altogether. Um, when you don't make somebody wrong, when you're open to forgiveness, and you know, a big part of this equation ultimately is forgiveness for the things that anyone has done for you in the past. Uh, because for, if you don't forgive, then that gets in the way of the conversation and doesn't allow you to operate in, in the realm of what works. You operate in the realm of right or wrong. You keep problems small. You fight over the little the little crap. And so forgiveness is a, a big part of that. So come into a conversation with forgiveness and, and just be open to just say, I want to know what's what, what the issue was here. If I did something uh, incorrect, please, uh, I'd love to learn and, and, and become better uh, with regards to this issue. So I don't know what the issue is. But, um, you know, again, you have to, it's almost, it's a di very diplomatic way of, of, of being but the point is you're trying to achieve a certain outcome. You're not trying to be right. You're not trying to catch that person in the act uh, because it satisfies you having caught them. If that makes sense. Again, very difficult thing to not do. Uh, catching somebody in the act of, of wronging you in some way is very satisfying to us uh, because at least we get that. They wronged us, but we get to, we, we got to ca catch them. You know, so I hope maybe that makes sense. Uh, last year, Heather's like, uh, and I'll take a couple more and then I'll have to wrap up, hopefully. Last year when I started learning how to build an online, online, my sponsor acted like I, no, I was no longer building a business. Then uh, for Black Friday, she went, she sent an email and included all my clients and offered them, oh, very good, offered them 50% off their entire order if they ordered through her. So uh, similar to what I, what I talked about with Edith just now, um, sometimes, so now, Sometimes if, a, if an issue persists or if its issue is really big, um, you know, and, and dialogue doesn't work, then you're, you, you, you have a few choices there. You can stay there and try to make each other wrong, or you can cordially choose to part ways and, and go in a different direction. And so, so some, some conflicts are not resolvable if the other party isn't willing to work and isn't willing to come come in alignment with a certain vision and so either it works or it doesn't work so you're not trying to you're not, you're not saying you're an evil person and you're just saying hey you know you know what uh joe uh you know this it's just this, this partnership is not working uh and and i'm gonna you know go somewhere else and i wish you the best of luck and and that's it so uh, you don't try to you know, say, well, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this, because you don't know what, what's going to come down the line or when you're going to run into that per individual later on. Because the only reason we try to make somebody wrong and, and try to just lay into them, basically, is to gain our own satisfaction. It's, to, it's for the ego. We like to be right. Uh, it's part of our survival. We like to be right, right, like to be wrong. It's like, uh, you, know, when the, you know, Caveman Bob tells Caveman Joe, uh, you don't go out there tonight. You're, you know, there's, there's a lot of danger out there. You might get eaten by a lion. And, uh, and, and, and caveman Joe says, no, no, I'll be fine. You know, I got my spear. I'll be okay. And then caveman Joe goes out there and, and sure enough, there's a lion and, and he gets mauled by the lion and, and, uh, caveman Bob is yelling to caveman Joe while he's getting mauled. I told you so. And that gives caveman Joe, you know, the, the, uh, the satisfaction of being right while his friend is being mauled by a lion. <laughs> so, uh, so at least he got that out of the whole situation. So Heather, I totally get where you're, where you're, where you're coming from. Uh, and, you know, some things are really big. Some things are really are big issues. What I'm providing here are tools that can help you resolve conflict. Sometimes the, the, the issue is so big that, that maybe it's not resolvable and, and that's okay too, as long as you le always leave with respect, no matter what, what, what happened. Uh, if you're going to leave or, or, or part ways with a certain partner. Uh, let me see. Maybe not a right or wrong way, but a better way. Yeah, absolutely. But what better way is for us is defined as what works. When you say better, you're saying what I'm suggesting is better than what you're suggesting. Therefore, you're making them wrong. So when you say this, I think this might work. And, and you propose an idea in that way, a person doesn't feel threatened because they go, oh, okay, let me see how it works. 
you know, they, they, they switch their mind to analyzing what you're proposing from a from a what works standpoint as opposed to hanging, hanging on to their ego. Now, they still might not agree with what you're doing, uh, but at least they're they're probably going to be more open to hearing you out. All right. So let me see how things are going. What's up? Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Frida. Uh, uh, if Sano says, uh, I... I was suggested not to spend time on Facebook because it's not working for Sano. Clearly it is working for a lot of other people. If if it's not working for you, then uh, there's something you haven't figured out, but clearly, you know, Facebook is is working and it's something to explore and you thank that person for their feedback and and that's it. Uh, Heather says, you're so right, Fernie. Today I'm thankful for the experience because it gave me the courage to go out and find a new business that has been such a blessing. So, yeah, sometimes leaving or sometimes parting ways or, or, or separating from the person that you're uh, having issues with, if they're that big, um, you know, is, is a good idea. And, and especially in this industry, and I'll close with this, uh, you know, building a business is a difficult thing to do. And, uh, and, and what the, the, the thing is, building network marketing is extremely difficult and it requires a certain set of skill sets. Those skill sets uh, involve people, but there's also a lot of a, a lot lacking in the network marketing space from a business development standpoint and what good business practice is. And I say that with all due respect to people that, that are top earners. There's a lot of person development and a lot of uh, you know how to how to basically become more effective personally, and of course you're caring and love for others. But from a business perspective, if you elevate uh, if you were to try to elevate network marketing, it only, it only goes so far because uh, having a real a business with organization and and, uh, and departments and all that stuff, it's just a whole other other skill set. And you're managing people that are not uh, entrepreneurs, and you're you're managing organizations that are, are people that are not entrepreneurs. And uh, so the skill set, you know, to run a real company and a real business is a very different skill set from network marketing. And um, and also, you know, in network marketing, we're very opportunistic. So we're opportunistic minded. Uh, we're always looking at what else is out there. And sometimes those things are hard to shed. Whereas when you built an organization, you have employees, you have overhead, whatever, uh, you're committed. You're all in to making that business work as opposed to the option to look elsewhere that we have here in this industry. So. Uh, that's just my personal take on on that, that, that I think a lot of people in the network marketing space who have only done network marketing have a lot of growth to do with regards to to being opportunistic uh, because opportunistic will, opportunism will always bite you in the butt. Uh, you're always going to create conflict. And so if you approach your business as if this is the house I've built and this is what I'm committed to, um, it's, it's, you, you know, you're not going to leave for, for, for petty reasons and you're not going to do anything that could potentially sabotage the house that you've already built. Um, so that's my l- little bit of, of what I have to say there. Uh, and I'm, I invite more discussion on that cause that's actually a really heavy and complex thing. So hopefully, uh, you guys got value from this. I know I went a little long, uh, and today's opening day at Dodger stadium. So I'm actually going to out the door in a, in a, in a minute or so. And I'll be out at the baseball game for during the day, and then I'll be back in the afternoon. Uh, and I'll try to uh, be on or, or catch the Monday Mojo tonight, uh, where we'll be able to talk about the No Excuses Summit. So I'm excited about that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Those of you who are watching this, if you'd like to learn more about what Elite Marketing Pro is, click on the link in the description if you were referred to by somebody, or go to uh, EliteMarketingPro.com and download our Attraction Marketing Bootcamp. It's our online recruiting course, uh, mini course, 10 days of videos that show you exactly the business model that, that we follow for, towards uh, marketing any business, but specifically generating prospects and leads for your network marketing business passively using the internet. So go check that out, EliteMarketingPro.com. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Take, have an awesome day, and we will see you tomorrow. Take care.